Welcome to 3 by 3 a Sunnylands interview program with a twist. I'm Micheline Gallagher, Director of Education and Environmental Programs, and this is a series in which we'll be interviewing women leaders in a variety of fields. But unlike other interviews, we're putting control in the hands of these women. Not only are we allowing them to select the person to interview them, we're also asking them to frame the questions they'll be asked. There's just one caveat. Three of those questions must be what they've been asked before and don't think they should be asked anymore. And three of those questions must be ones they rarely or never get asked, but think they should be. We hope this format will allow some freedom to communicate truths, thoughts, and expressions in a way that suits them. We hope you enjoy the program and we thank you for joining us. Gada Amer was born in Cairo, Egypt, and after turning 11, she moved to Nice, France. But her education and work spans multiple countries and continents, and her wide-ranging practice spans painting, cast sculpture, ceramics, works on paper, garden and mixed media installations. We have listed her biography and resume on our webpage, and I encourage you to go there and see her extensive international presence, her education, personal and collaborative works, and installations, including the 2021 Desert X installation at Sunnylands. I found a quote in Gada's biography that I would like to use to introduce her. Recognizing that women are taught to model behaviors and traits shaped by others, and that art history and the history of painting in particular are shaped largely by expressions of masculinity, Gada's work actively subverts these frameworks through both aesthetics and content. Her practice explores the complicated nature of identity as it is developed through culture and religious norms, as well as personal longing and understanding of the self. Today, Gada Amer is joining us from Cairo, Egypt, where she will be interviewed by her sister, Sahar Amer. My name is Sahar Amer, and I'm professor of Arabic studies. I have had the pleasure of collaborating with my sister Gada on a number of projects as I explore um, questions of gender and sexuality in my own research. Some of the archival material I have used in my research have inspired some of Gada's paintings and sculptures, and I'm delighted to be able to interview her today for this project. Gada, as an artist, you get to do many interviews and to speak to a wide range of people from different backgrounds, from art specialists to non-specialists. Today, I would like to speak to you about some of the questions that you find unhelpful or that you think distort your work, and also find out from you what questions you wish that people had asked you instead. Let's begin with the questions that make you cringe. Please go ahead. Well, the first question that really annoys me is this one I'm reading. Do the threads that cover the woman's body in your textile work represent Islamic base? Well, this question uh, annoys me on several levels, on many levels, actually. So first one is the Islamic veil. Uh, uh, by asking me about Islamic veils that is traditionally head and body cover worn by many Muslim women around the world. This question assumes that I work with Islamic symbols because I am Muslim and that Islam is somehow the primary focus of, of my work. This question would be similar to someone asking whether Van Gogh, Jasper Jones or John Mitchell uh, painting represent Christian or Jewish art. People would dismiss <laughs> such a question as totally out of place uh, yet, but the same address to someone from a Muslim background is assumed to be legitimate. And this is really extremely annoying. Yes. Um, because they, um, the, the other part of this question that I find annoying is uh, um, the label that they put in my art production as textile work. Um, for me, my work is not about textile. I've never studied textile. Uh, I am not trying to make a statement about textile. I use uh, um, uh, I use thread, yes, and needle, yes, and I do embroidery, yes. But this is uh, this is uh, because I wanted to make a statement about painting, uh, and this is what pe people they don't understand. 
Can you explain to me a little bit more why you insist so much on categorizing your work as painting, even though you use um, thread and needle and cloth really in your paint in, in your artwork? Well, the, the, the reason why I insist so much uh, on using the term painting on my work, which because I think if they are painting, it's not that I insist that they're painting, I think they are painting. It's because um, I wanted to, it's, it stems from an incident that happened to me in the 80s while I was studying in uh, 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 painting, uh, well, in, during my study in France, in Nice, in the south of France. Um, and then this, uh, um, at that time, um, uh, well, it, it, it was five years. So the second two years, it's everybody. And then you specialize. And then I went to my third year to specialize and I took painting. And then I go to the school and the teacher, uh, the French teacher, told all the women to wait outside and they, they were not allowed in the classroom. And this, if we needed help, we, we, we were allowed to ask our male um, uh, like uh, friends, uh, they would help us, but he will not teach a woman painting. And I was very shocked, very sad, very upset. So I went to, uh, to the library and I discovered, I went to, to uh, that I was, that uh, I asked the librarian, I want uh, um, books of women painter, because I never even realized that painting would be gendered. I've never even thought about this. And then I discovered in, throughout the art history that we are, we've been taught only about male artists. Uh, and then we, and I was very uh, shocked. So that's why I, that's why I, had, I decided to use embroidery, to use a, a medium that is um, a female, uh, uh, like associated with female, and to make painting with them. And to, to so this is why I, it's very important for them that they are painting. Hmm. So if I understand you correctly, you reject the classification of your artwork with Islam and with textile work. Is that right? Yes, it's absolutely right. Um, I hate when they uh, when when they classify me as a Muslim because they don't classify anybody as, as a Jewish or Buddhist or I don't see why people should be classified by their religion. And I really hate to be classified as a woman artist. I'm just an artist. Uh, I'm making painting, and that's that's uh, that's who I am, like everybody else. Okay, okay. So if questions about religion or gender do not correctly explain your work, what would be a better question to ask in order to understand it? It's like, why, I would say, why do you paint with, uh, with, uh, with thread and needle? It would be a good question. Okay, okay. And perhaps um, the relation of um, uh, the, the, the fact that women finally are entering and helping to construct a new history of art. But this was like, uh, they are, have always been constructing a new uh, history of art. It's just that the historian never wrote this, uh, this history. It's not uh, uh, that we were never there in this history. It is, it's just that we have never been, we, nobody has written the history, nobody wanted women in, uh, to, to study art. So we have been, we have always been there, but just not in, not in the margin of art, not in the, in the margin of art history, not, not collected by museums, not, uh, so it's. Uh... Okay, okay. Thank you so much for clarifying this for us, Gada. I would like to ask you now about other questions that you are asked that you find equally misplaced. Uh, this, the second question that I dislike is whether I turn to ceramics as an art form because it's a woman's craft. I uh, that is it here again the categorization of your work with women's craft that you find unconstructive? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I, Yes, absolutely. I really because it, we, we don't work with uh, with our gender. Like it's not. This is not. I I I don't think that we. Yes, we can use some of it to say something, but we, it's not. Uh, oh, this is 
in feminine, so I'm going to work uh, with this. Uh, and first of all, I don't think ceramic is a feminine uh, form of art. So why did you turn to ceramics? Yeah, this would be the question that I, I think it's better to, this is, I prefer that people ask me, why did you turn to ceramics? So I turned to ceramics um, because I was uh, actually, uh, I fell into ceramics. I didn't choose to, 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 to do ceramics. Ceramic chose me, maybe. Uh, uh, what I did is I was doing um, my first sculpture that didn't use thread at all was um, uh, actually uh, 100 words of love. Uh, this is uh, some of the work that, that uh, some of your research that uh, yes, yes. you know about, so the 100 words of love. So this was my first <coughs> uh, sculpture that I made um, without using the, <coughs> the thread and needle. And it was a commission in, uh, um, in Qatar, the Qatar Museum. Uh, and uh, so I, I, I was given money to do whatever I wanted, which was like a great opportunity for me, uh, something to explore. The, the, uh, the chef was telling me, you explore, I want you to explore. Uh, and I, I found it very fascinating. So I said, okay, I'm gonna do something without uh, this, uh, uh, the thread and the needle. And I did this. And then it, I was very fascinated by sculpture when I was doing that, it was a, a, a new medium for me. I fell in love with sculpture. I, I really fell in love with sculpture. Uh, but then what I did is I used, um, uh, I used people to do my artwork. I draw everything, but I used fabricator. So the fabricator we, we would use oil clay to do the faces or to, to make the writings. And then when I wanted to, uh, so because you, you draw something and then you fabricate it. So there is a big difference between this translation. So when I wanted to re-adjust some of the, the clay work, I was not able to. It was a, a medium I've never touched. I didn't know how to do. So I felt extremely frustrated. And I, uh, the more, we, uh, the more we, we were doing the sculpture, the, the more I was frustrated. And then I, uh, I was able, more or less, at the end, with a lot of pain, to, to correct it. But it took me a lot of energy. So I decided that I have to learn this technique so that I could be able, uh, I am able to do my own work and to be, to evolve because I think it's, there is a, um, uh, there is something with the hand, um, which is called in French intelligence de la main, which is like, uh, um, you are smart with your hand. The hand as well speaks and talks and, uh, and guides you, not only the brain of an artist, there is the hand, for me it's very important. So I decided to go to classes to learn ceramics. Uh, well, I, I asked them, what is this? They told me it's clay, you can, uh, you can learn this technique by, it's a ceramic technique. So I went to a class to, and then I discovered a whole new world, another world. Mm -hmm. So this is why I started ceramics. Um, so the, the world of ceramics, um, I, I read somewhere that you were describing it as liberating, that you felt liberated when you did ceramics, um, in contrast perhaps to some of your paintings. And it's so hard to imagine clay to be, um, or ceramics to be liberating, because clay is such a heavy medium, and your sculptures are so large that I can't imagine how liberating that is. Can you, you know, explain a bit on that or elaborate a bit? You know, when I, I fell into ceramics or I, 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 I was doing this, I fell in love with sculpture, I was not thinking at all of any male artist or the history of art of this teacher who forbid me to go to this class. And I, I am, when I make painting, I'm angry. I'm always angry and I'm always thinking about that man who just forbid the woman and all of the women in art history. <laughs> I'm like, so I am focusing on really saying this story over and over again in my paintings. And while when I am I doing ceramics and sculpture, I am just like, I don't, I don't know. I feel free of, of all of this. And I feel, uh, so I, and I feel, I feel really, yeah, free to explore whatever I want with my gender or without my gender, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, this is really quite fascinating. Um, what I'm hearing you say is that, um, 
it's really important for you as an artist to eliminate the gendered aspect to, to, to bypass labels and categorizations um, in order to achieve true freedom as an artist. Yes. Um, what would be a third and final question that you feel ought to be reformulated in order better to understand um, your body of artworks? Well, the third question I found uh, very irritating is when uh, it's uh, um, when people ask me, I, I, I am, as you know, I do my own work and then I collaborate with another artist with Reza Harkonde on a uh, lot of things, videos, performance, and, and a lot of time that my galleries ask me to, to, to sign only by name, my name, because uh, um, because I am, I have more of a brand than Reza. He's less famous than me, so they, they uh, in order to sell it, uh, they want me to just sign my name and just bypass his name, um, so that I, uh, it's just to sign the brand Gadame. And I hate, I'm not a brand. I hate that to be labeled as a brand. Well, I mean, it seems to me I can understand their perspective of the art dealers about branding. And so I'm still unclear why you find that so irritating. Yes, uh, it's very irritating because br branding is, is not art. It is the contrary of art. It's the death of art. Art for me is about research. It's about um, what happened in life. It's looking at life and then like trying to, to, um, to say, what in the surrounding and how we do this. And people should look at an art piece and not just at the signature in the bottom so that they, they to know if they like it or not, they just should, should enjoy it. And then oftentimes the, the people, they just look at the, the signature and they say, oh, it's good. Uh, um, this must be good because it's this artist or that artist. So they are missing out on a lot of things. And what I find as well irritating is, especially in the visual art, is like two artists, only if they have always worked together since a long time, like Gilbert and George, or a lot of couples, they're allowed to do collaboration. But two artists that do their own separate work, then they do collaboration. It, it makes a problem for, uh, for, the, art, for the art economy. Uh, and it's very, it, it's very frustrating and annoying because I want so to I guess what I'm hearing. Sorry. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Please continue. <laughs> no, because I, I really uh, would like people to, uh, to um, understand how a piece is made. And, and by working, for example, with another artist, for me, in this case with Reza, I was able to go places where I have never been able to, to reach or to think. Uh, and I'm sure, and for him, it's exactly the same. So we have cre created maybe another brand, I don't know, or an, another way of uh, making art or, uh, or, or making a, a, a painting or making, and this is very, it's, 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 it's rather um, encouraging and uh, it's rather like, uh, it's a plus. Mm -hmm. that's really very interesting that's really very interesting because i guess your answer to this question highlights again the importance of uh, freedom um, and maintaining um, and preserving your freedom as an artist um, against labels against categories uh, against the history of art um, that is that from which women were excluded or you know historians have actively excluded them as you say and then here again against um, dealers who really want to pigeonhole you in one particular brand in order to um, promote their own interest is that right it's, it's the freedom of the artist that is primordial for you Yes, absolutely. This is very, very important that artist is free because this is the, this is the only good thing to be an artist. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. Yes, that's right. Well, thank you so much, Geda, for this um, wonderful interview. I really enjoyed um, speaking to you and I think that everyone who listens to it will thoroughly enjoy um, learning your perspective. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Sarah. Thank you. Again. <laughs> Thank you so much.
so much. Thank you so much for, for that time and for, for coming today to do this. Um, we so, I got to, we so appreciate your candid sharing of experiences and Sahar, your, your ability to ask even more deeper questions was wonderful. Um, and, and I hope this conversation will continue to inform cross-cultural, cross-gender con conversations that we need to be having. Um, to our viewers, I encourage you to go to sunnylens.org, look at Gada's bio and resume to further explore her works. And both Gada and Sahar, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much for having us.